This video is a little look at how you can change the settings in Arial Odd and specifically just about how you do it by typing in or using your cursor. So if I go to the sun angle setting, I can see there's a 50 in there and I can just type in say five to change the sun angle. But there's a little horizontal bar to the right of that and when I hover the mouse arrow over it, it switches to this two-way arrow thing. And when it does that, if I hold down my left mouse button, I can use that as a kind of slider back and forth. So I'm holding down my left mouse button to change that. But I can always just type in a number there. So let me change it back to 10 and hit enter. Same goes for any of the other settings, even the ones that don't look like you can type in. So if I go to, let me see, density for fog, if I put the fog halfway up roughly, I'm using the left mouse button to change the settings here. I can also just double click where it says 5.99 and just type in any value like 6.25 and hit enter. Or to the right of numeric values, sometimes you'll see a little pointer going up and down. If I hover over that, I get the little cursor arrow up and down. I can use that in the same way as a little slider up and down. So that's how you can change the numerics, the numeric values with kind of slider approach or by just typing in values and hitting enter. When it comes to changing colors, so the background color, for example, if I make sure on the left I'm on all, I scroll to the very bottom, I can see the ground color. It's currently dark gray, which it probably will be on yours by default. If I left click the color patch once, the color options come up. I can change the V value, which is lighter or darker. I can just left click and drag. I could also enter in a value here, same as before, like 20 and hit enter. Or I can use the little slider approach by hovering over the up and down arrow and changing the values there. So I can do that for the V, I can do it for the saturation or the individual colors. I can just click anywhere in the color segments. There's also a little hamburger style menu button which I can click and then I can enter hex code. So if I want it to be white, for example, and I knew the hex code for that was FFF, FFF, I'd enter it and uh, I just type that in and I'll hit enter. I could enter RGB values manually or HSV values, but I like to just pick colors like this, but it is nice to be able to enter specific HTML values and the three bars, the kind of hamburger icon, we can click on that. Okay, you get the point there, that's fine. Other things, if I you see this little radio button, so if I want to add a grid, then I'll click on to have the grid on, but usually by default, you won't see the grid for a number of reasons. The spacing is probably too narrow or the width of the grid isn't big enough. So if I change the space of the grid to 100 and hit enter, but change the width of the grid to 0 0.5 and hit enter. Yeah, then we get the grid in. But we don't always want the grid on the map. So if I hit the radio button, we can turn the grid on and off. Okay, so that's another little way we can change settings. So just remember when you're changing things you can and you see a number, you can always highlight it and enter any number you like and hit enter. So I'm gonna change the offset on the right from zero to five and I'm going to hit enter or I can use the kind of slider approach up and down when I see the arrow, the two-way arrow cursor. Okay, so we'll leave this little bit of Switzerland looking like that for now and hopefully that's a useful little tip or two to get you going.